last year, St. Bede's College took out the South Island Championship and were unbeaten in the Crusaders Press Cup. They've had a great four-year run of Canterbury supremacy. The pride of Christchurch Boys High will again be tested in the Rugby Park Cauldron. Their early season form was impressive as they look to rebuild their mana. Both teams are superbly supported. It's everything in the 100th matchup between St. Bede's College and Christchurch Boys High today on Land Rover First 15 Rugby. Yes, the motto of St. Bede's College, Fide et Operi by Faith and Works. The motto, the emblem of Christchurch Boys High, Altiora Petto, to seek higher things. In rugby terms, it means rugby is deep in the DNA of these two venerable Christchurch Rugby Schools. As I welcome you in, my name's Keith Quinn, this is Steve Davey and Bull Allen. There is real crunch and crackle surrounding this game. Steve, don't we just love it? These are the heavy hitters <laughs> of the Crusaders Press Cup, uh, Keith. Massive crowd in and obviously tying in with the delayed centenary of uh, St. Bede's. It's their 101st year, but the earthquake caused problems last year, obviously. So a massive crowd, genuine feeling. Press cut points in the second round in a convoluted system that they have, but they won't be worrying about any of that today. This is the big one. Both three from three this year, a lot of points for, very few against. This is a line in the sand. He's certainly laying it down for us nicely there, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> a former All Black Bull, Alan. Bull, now these aren't just kids who are coming out to play here. A lot of experience in these two first 15s. Yeah, well, both schools got a lot of boys back from last year, which is really important because every year, of course, you use, lose year 13 boys as they go and young guys come through so it's nice to have the experience with the young guys coming through to pass on the traditions and the heritage that the school has and I think um, today we're going to see an outstanding match of uh, some youth but a lot of experience so with that will come quality I'm sure and we'll introduce these players to you in the next uh, 70 minutes of top the first 15 rugby and Steve Davies now going to introduce those teams to you well, size and speed in the Christchurch pack with Lock Jeff Cridge, especially athletic and a perfect backup to a fleet-footed loose trio. Fletcher Smith's experience at 5.8 is a major plus for Christchurch boys. Good ball from that pack and Smith's vision should unlock the outsides. Bull met Christchurch boys co-captain Angus Cameron just a little earlier. Well, Angus, I understand you've had a very good pre-season. Uh, yeah, we did. We went up north and started off in Auckland and played St Kent's. I uh, had a close loss there, but you know we took a lot out of the game. Then we went down to Hamilton and had a strong win against their first 15, 27 to 7. Yeah, so we're really happy with that. And then we uh, finished off our tour with Palmy Boys. Um, so it was great since our coach, uh, Mr. Archibald, was from around there. Yeah, Fantastic. And I'm sure you always look forward to this big occasion against St. Bede's. Yeah, it's definitely one that's highlighted on the calendar each year. And with this being their centurion, centurion year this year, um, everyone's sort of up for it and it's great, going to be a big occasion, yeah. Well, longevity is the hallmark of the St. Pede's forward uh, lineup. Second and third year players to burn with real power on the front row and pace of plenty in Billy Harmon and Charlie Gamble as Terriers in the loose. Moses Falutolo will be the backline linchpin. St. Pede's skipper Missy Moa Lamasatelli is with Paul. Well, Missy, it's a big year for you, isn't it, with your centenary? Yes, it is, Paul. Um, centenary, so it's going to be a special occasion for the boys. So they're definitely up for this challenge. And will there be a lot of old-timers here, do you think, watching the game today? Yeah, definitely. Over the 100 years, most of the... will be about 1,400 old boys coming to watch us. So it's always special to do something for them. Does that add a little bit of pressure to the team today or, or adds excitement to the occasion? Um, definitely adds excitement to the occasion with the boys and the centenary year, so the boys are up for it today. OK, let's check the conditions. Look, it's not uh, enough to blow away a beautiful bird shop there. The wind is 11k from the east. Temperature's cool at 13, but great rugby conditions, overcast, no sun problems, and a beautiful firm field here at Rugby Park. And the crowds are coming in. We always get good support of these big uh, Christchurch games, the Christ's College against Boys High, and this one, hard to say which is the bigger of the two games, but they have the Boys High guys at one end and the St. Bede's guys. These are St. Bede's supporters at the other end. Lots of excitement in the crowds. And look at that, hardly a seat in the, uh, in the famous stand here at Rugby Park. 
Well, we all know that there's a background to any rugby being played in Christchurch at this time, a disruption and rebuilding around the city. And there was an earthquake, a significant earthquake, almost to the minute, uh, 24 hours ago. So we're, there's been a struggle to keep some of the schools open and repairing the damage is still ongoing at some. So our reporter, Alex Lewis, came south to check out the backdrop to that behind this game. The massive task of rebuilding Christchurch is well underway, with the damage far worse than original estimates. In many places, the destruction is obvious, but many buildings which may originally appear to have escaped no longer comply with safety standards. An estimated $150 million of damage has been done to schools in the region. Christchurch Boys High is certainly not one of the worst hit, but there's no doubt it has suffered. The library and the assembly hall are among the areas out of action and causing significant disruption for the boys. There's no assemblies um, twice a week, which means there's um, no real chances to get the whole school together, um, which is quite tough for the junior students, um, learning that kind of the school traditions and school morales and things like that. Well, at first glance, St Bede's College looks to be almost completely unaffected by any earthquake damage. In fact, in this autumnal setting, you'd say the school looks very picturesque. However, a closer inspection tells a very different story. Well, Jerry Davidson is the first 15 coach and deputy rector. He's given me a bit of a tour of St Bede's College. Now, Jerry, everywhere I look, I see fences. Just uh, tell us what the story is. Well, a lot of uh, our buildings are now no longer code compliant, so they have to be closed down until such time as they are. And some of our other buildings are damaged to the point where we may have to pull them down. Well, let's start with the chapel, because that is the focal point of St Bede's. Uh, a real shame, because the chapel's gone, is that correct? Yeah, culturally and religiously the heart of the school. Um, so many old boys have been married there, and their sons have been baptised there, and unfortunately that probably will come down. We, we are unable to save it. Very briefly, Jerry, just list some of the buildings that you've lost here at St Bede's. We lost our, our tuck shop. Uh, we've lost our toilet block. We've lost, at the moment, the hall is out. There are two science labs, uh, two boarding dormitories, uh, about another five classrooms. Our dining hall was out. So um, it's, it's a bit of a disruption to the, the regular running of the, the school. Well, that's a massive part of your school buildings here at St Bede's. What kind of impact has that had on the students and the teachers in day-to-day -day life? Well, I think it's a reflection of Christchurch, really. People get on with it. Um, the buildings are damaged, um, we know that, and we've had to make huge changes, and people's lives have been turned upside down, teachers in different classrooms, boys moving around, but school goes on, and I suppose it shows that schools are more than just bricks and mortar. And St Bede's have certainly got on with it on the rugby field. They'll be looking to celebrate their school centenary by winning the Press Cup for the fifth year in a row. And add to that all the emotion from the events of the last 15 months. It does have an extra significance when we're playing. We usually play for school. When we, play, when we do play for school, we play from the heart. You're also playing for your families as well, all the lost ones you've lost, and just playing for... The other teams, they're lost ones as well, so you want to play for everyone in Christchurch. Well, despite their historical dominance in Canterbury, Christchurch boys high are playing catch-up and are under pressure to turn the tide. It's talked about everywhere you go. I can't go into the pub without someone saying, are you going to knock St. Bede's over this year or who's going to win the game? It's uh, every, everywhere you go. You know, I think the boys have just got to say to themselves, this is just another game of rugby and I've just got to worry about those little things and go out there and do, you know, play my game. Make sure you watch the battle for Christchurch supremacy. Boys high versus St. Bede's, live on the Rugby Channel. One, two, three. Go! Yes, one, two, three, school. And that's the, the essence of that beautiful piece there by Alex was rugby goes on. Is That's the key, isn't it? Well, life goes on. And mm -hmm. those of us who haven't sampled it, um, you know, we come in and out. We, we just don't know the, the normality of life that has been lost. So it's pretty tough. And, and they have risen very, very well in all, all spheres of life. Bring it back to today, Keith. Bragging rights, yes. We know that uh, the Press Cup champions have been St Bede's for the last four years. That has to be great motivation for Christchurch boys. 
I have a genuine feeling this could be one of the classics, even though it's still early season. Let's hope so. Yeah, thanks for that, Steve. We won't ask Paul about the sad loss of the tuck shop. That, <laughs> that was, that'll be too tough for him to find the words. Look, it's on. We're going to mention the new service we're providing this year. It's the results from other significant First 15 games around the country each Saturday. If you text First 15 to 3080 and follow the instructions, uh, you will be able to get a full list of the first uh, of the major games around the country, and we'll have major game results for you later this afternoon live here on Land Rover First 15 Rugby. We've got a beautiful game coming up for you today. St. Bede's College against Christchurch Boys High. The battle of two of the big colleges in rugby live here on Land Rover First 15. Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> no, that's it. Park, we're in St Albans in Christchurch and we're waiting for the two teams to come out in this very big game this afternoon on Land Rover First 15 Rugby. It's uh, Christchurch Boys High School and here comes Angus Cameron leading them out and uh, this is a very fine looking lineup of players representing a school established in 1881. For Cridge and Cameron, the Christchurch lock forwards should have the edge come line-out time and in the air. Domination there will lead to a definite advantage and probably a need for flexibility in the St. Bede's game plan. And Fletcher Smith now into his fourth year of first 15 play. Christchurch has a general of real quality. His performance will be pivotal to Christchurch boys' fortunes and St. Bede's will be doing everything possible to shut him down. And other than Stone, the Christchurch reserves are all first-year players, so their rugby development takes a huge step forward today. It's a home game today for St. Bede's. You see them coming out. They have a 101 symbol on their team's jerseys today to celebrate 100 year, one years off the school. Third-year players James Tucker and Missy Moa Lamos Italia, the go-to men for St. Bede's, and the big, bruising players. Christchurch boys will be doing well to quell their fire. Moses Faliatolo is another third-year ref. He's at centre, and with good ball, he's likely to be a real menace to the opposition defence. And like Christchurch, not much experience in the St. Bede's reserves either, so a big day in store for them as the coaches bring the changes later in the match. So both teams got a great welcome onto the park here. Some of the boys capped, you see. So Beads boys actually are capped for a certain number of games, and then other capped players then recommend boys to be capped, and the coaches as well. So now we start with the traditional haka, and uh, in the black and red of Christchurch boys high, Brad Himopo will lead. And for St. Beads here, in the red and black, Missy Moa, I must tell you, the captain.
And there's a graphic demonstration, Keith, of the experience in both teams. The number of caps that have been laid down. Those players have played at least a season, a season and a half, as you explained, of top rugby, recognised by their peers and their coaches. Brad Himopo. Challenge laid down. This is Brad Himopo. the 100th time these two proud schools have faced up to each other on the rugby field. Fantastic. Electric atmosphere, young and old, just enthralled in the lead-up to this game. And Keith, if the players match the passion with their skill level, then we will see a genuine classic. Conditions are perfect. Ideal rugby weather, just a gentle easterly, which is coming from the top left of your screen. So, a definite advantage in the first half with the breeze to St. Vince. A referee today is Josh Noonan, one of Canterbury's very best, and the two uh, touch judges, assistant referees. Well, uh, good to see father and son in action today, Richard Notley and Dominic Notley running the sides of the game today. So, it's all set. It's the 100th rugby matchup between St. Bede's on the left and Christchurch Boys High. Make no mistake, there'll be no backward step in this game here live on Land Rover First 15 Rugby today. Josh Noonan set to get the game underway and history to be made here this afternoon as Ashley Smith kicks and there's a little bit of a mix-up in the taking of the ball in the air, which is a surprise from Christchurch Boys where they're expected 
to dominate. So early touch of a ball here for Bowen Aranga and giving it out to his big man. And already the uh, crowd here in huge voice, Smith. Early touch and an early break for Faliatola. He is the glue in the back line as far as uh, St. Beads is concerned. Good ball running, distributing player. Touch for Jack Best. His grandfather, I'm sorry, he's Jack and his grandfather John, but also known as Jack. Six matches on the 1935 All Black Tour of Britain. Very proud of that as the young man. And Keith, this is a very fine beginning. This match is thank you, thank you. showing early signs of that promise that we well, hoped. Well, have a look at the lovely catch and pass early on from number 10 in the black and reds of St. Bede's. There he is there, Snowy head on to the left of the screen. That's Ashley Smith. He just turned 16 the fortnight ago. Here he has it again. Again, a lovely pass. Out to the big guys out wide. In comes the fullback, Kenichiro Kuwai. He's a Japanese player on scholarship here in Christchurch. And a lovely story about number 15 for St. Beads, Kenichiro Kuwai. Uh, he's just here for 22 weeks. Uh, and his mum and dad flew in last, right, last night and uh, carrying on a little bit of a tradition here. They had Yoshikazu Fujita last year. And what a boon he was to St. Beads. And here's their latest uh, scholarship earner. Kenichiro Kuwai. Meantime, on the boys' high side, have a look at this guy. He's also a Smith, no relation. Fletcher Smith, bound to play a big part in this game. Yes, he's a talented young man, Fletcher Smith. He's already done a TV ad not too long ago with Dan Carter, an Adidas ad, so uh, he's, uh, he's on the horizon, isn't he? But fantastic start from uh, particularly St. Bede's. And finally, Christchurch boys get their hands on the pull. They do it. A good run from Nankerville up to the 10-metre mark. Christchurch territory. School versus college. Fierce rivals for 100 years on the field. St. Bede's into their 101st year. Christchurch boys into their 131st, having been established in 1881. The second penalty. Let's just explain that. It was the uh, centenary last year, but they didn't have it because of the big earthquake. So that's why they've got 101 on their shirts today. But last night in the city, there was a big dinner and some sore heads around town uh, from the St. Bede's dinner. It's all the Bedeans, as they're called, came to town to celebrate and uh, no doubt reflect on what's happened to their school by the circumstances of recent events here in Christchurch. So it's a fantastic atmosphere here, and we just love coming here for First 15 Rugby because it's like so unique to this part of the, the rugby scene. Well, both teams still take, taking a little while to settle down, aren't they? And that's a little sloppy, but finally taken down by Brad Hamopo. Nudge forward, oh, in fact, not straight from St. Bede's. Lucky oh, there, Christchurch, because that was a St. Bede's throw from the penalty and looking to work. Good field position with the wind at their backs. How pivotal First will that be in what promises to be ball a very tight game? Might not be much in this one. Absolutely. Field position is going to be critical in a game like this, Steve. You can't afford to be making mistakes in your part of the field. You need to get field position Touch. and then start to mount the attack from those Pause. opportunities. First scrum of the game. And looks like a pretty good one here from Christchurch boys as they get it back cleanly. So Smith trying to find his outsides here. Remember, the team in black with the red are the Press Cup and South Island champions of secondary school rugby. First 15 rugby for the last four seasons. Out to the right wing side, it's Miles Thorogood. Back goes Kuai, the fullback. Uh, and that's a nice authoritative kick. The, the guy that played fullback in this game last year, Yoshikazu Fujita, is now playing test rugby for all Japan. That's how good he was just a year ago. Referee Noonan. Yes, he's uh, picked up the Christchurch boys' open side flanker, Oakley Johnston from uh, Kaikura, who prides himself on his tackling technique. But flying in there on the angle didn't need to do so because it was a very uh, solid run from Hamopo. He laid the ball back beautifully and uh, Johnston going in to disrupt. He didn't need to do that. So once again, an opportunity here for the St. Beads to build that field position and therefore pressure. Look at this stat here. From 2004 to 2006, they lost one out of 66 games. 
Isn't that an amazing effort? Well, that's been replicated by some beads of late. They've only lost one of 62 in the last four years. So these are the powerhouses in Christchurch, no doubt. The throw from Liam Smart down the back. And it's in the hands of some beads at the moment. The number nine there is Bowen Aranga away to Ashley Smith. The second five back to Sione Lavamai. And they're 40 metres out. And it's with Aranga again. This is a nice-looking combination. And Big Jack Best doing his work. Good tackle there by Fletcher Smith. We've got some very special young players here on Land Rover First 15 Rugby where we say we see tomorrow's stars today. Well, they have a real opportunity to press their case, these teams. This is a traditional in the school. They play in different divisions of the Press Cup. We'll see where this lands. We'll come back to that as it gets away from Thoroughbred. Uh, Thoroughgood. In front. The referee playing advantage, the chasing players in front. Yeah. St. Bede's Fair play in, in the front. northern division of the Press Cup, so they go right through to Nelson and, and Marlborough. Christchurch boys play in the southern division. They've put a line basically through Christchurch. They go down to Timaru. Interestingly, they uh, and they'll, they'll they will play each other in the second round. The top four from each of the divisions come together for the second round. And this game is actually carrying points for the second round if they eventually play each other, and they will. So there's a lot more than just today's result. And if it is a tough competition, and these are the teams to go through to contest the Press Cup final, these points today vital. Yes, indeed, and that was uh, clearly offside Michael Green. He was a bit disappointed about the call. Here's Liam Smart. Sometimes he's a significant flanker in the St. Bede's team. And they're 15 metres out. A good start here by St. Bede's ball. Absolutely. Good take there from James Tucker as they get a bit of a roll on up through the middle. And now they start to work it through their backs. And they've got a couple of big units at second and centre, St. Bede's. And they're trying to do a bit of a crash and set up and get themselves going forward. But this is great breakdown work from Christchurch boys as they ramble over the top of this one and turn it over. Hamilton back to Smith. Yeah, terrific. And Fletcher Smith, he's a player who is a very good runner. We've already seen some courageous tackles from him, but best of all, doesn't make many mistakes. Great counter-attacking there in terms of the ruck situation. Second phase from Christchurch boys, and he's got it out. He hasn't wasted all of the good work from his forwards. Uh, he looks like a smart player, and he's a player that looks to me who can read the game when it's on to kick, when it's on to pass. And that's what it's all about. That steady influence of first 5-8 is critical to your team's performance. And here's a nice run by Charlie Gamble. And uh, he's taking it forward there, they're 40 metres out now. And this time from Ashley Smith, lovely passing from Ashley Smith. This is a lover, my number 12. Down he goes, presents it well. Bowen Aranga, he says his favourite player is uh, Aaron Smith. And doesn't he look like Aaron Smith? Here is Ashley Smith, lost here by Lama Satelli. Halfway line is to the left of this. Number five is uh, Levi... Brunton Stowers for St. Beads. So a chance again for St. Beads to build position and possession, continuity. Christchurch boys having to do a lot of tackling, a lot of hard tackling, big bruising players running at them. But they're keeping St. Beads at bay, and it's just a, a little sloppy, and Christchurch boys looking to swing through. And once again, the 